Hey guys, we've been discussing uh, hydroponics, doing the, uh, the rail system, showing the lettuce. Uh, lettuce is one of the really easy things to grow. Any type of leafy green will do good in hydroponics, whether it be rails, or NFT, deep water culture, uh, floating rafts. All of those things are easy to do for lettuce. When you want to do the fruit and vegetables like tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, it takes a little bit more space uh, and a little bit more work to it but it's still a pretty simple process. This right here is the Dutch bucket setup that I'm working on for this year. Plants look really good. Going down this line right here, this is the first one that I did. And as I got time, I started adding more and the ones on the end down there are the most recent ones. And I've got four more to do. If you can see the end of that pipe down there, this two inch PVC, uh, it's open. This system is not even connected yet. I don't have a water pump hooked up to it. I don't have an air pump hooked up to it. Nothing. And this stuff is going just fine. The only thing I've been doing, I went ahead and mixed up the nutrient solution. And I'll come through here about three or four times a day and just pour some water in there. It's got the fertilizer that they need. Pour it across them roots. And they're doing just fine. Now you can do this without the water pumps without the air stones and stuff if you didn't have electricity you could make this work now the thing is would you want to come along here you know three or four times a day and water these buckets i ask you this question how many unemployed people are there right now in the united states i think there's a lot of people out there who would like to grow some vegetables who have a world of time on their hands if you had a place to set this up outside and you didn't have current so you could get electricity to it, look, go out there three or four times a day, water these things, and they'd be just fine. If you wanted to do something a little bit different, you could maybe take a gallon jug and punch you a tiny hole in the bottom of it or right in the side and set it so it just uh, streamed right into the base of this plant and you could cut out this walking along right here. A lot of things you can do to make this work without being complicated. What I'm gonna do right now is walk y'all through where I was and how I got to this point right here with the Dutch buckets and go through and explain everything that I saw and why I ended up going this route and all the little things that I noticed in between. How well is this working? That's a nice healthy plant right there and the first cluster of five pretty little tomatoes coming on. Now, when you talk about Dutch buckets, the primary thing is the bucket. It's actually called a Bato bucket, B-A-T-O. And if you were to go to a hydroponic store or somewhere a greenhouse supplier online and order a Bato Dutch bucket, this is what you get right here. A little 11 liter bucket. Got a hole cut right down in the bottom of it right here. You'd also get two elbows like this, identical. And they lock in place like that. And they're gonna fit in the bottom of this bucket. If you look at the profile of this bucket right here, see where you have this kind of L shape? That's where this elbow is gonna go. It's gonna fit in here just like that. Basically, it just locks, snaps right inside. Those buckets right there, by the time you pay for the two elbows and shipped it to you, would be almost $7 a piece. That's a little bit too much to pay. A lot simpler to get some grommets and some PVC fittings and make your own. Here's a demo that I made up out of a cooking container. I'll show you how to make it in just a minute, but I'm gonna show you just uh, how the elbows actually work. Fill this thing up with water. So you can imagine, it's not gonna fill up that fast with a drip line, but you can imagine over time, as you're pumping fluid into it, it's gonna fill up and then start to run out the elbows right here. And we'll see how much is actually left in the container. So the water is going to stop right even with the bottom of this uh, piece of PVC right here. And this is going to be the reservoir of water that's left. So the way this works is you're pumping fluid in the top and it's going down feeding the roots. And this part right here, this reservoir will feed the plant in between the cycles. Generally, uh, most of the setups I have seen run it like 30 minutes, three times a day. I ran mine pretty much all day long the first time I did it and it worked just fine. So obviously there's, there's some wiggle room there. 
But keep in mind also that as you have this container full of your grow media, you're not actually going to have this much water in here. You may have this level right here, but you're not going to have that amount of volume because your grow media is also going to be sitting in the bottom and taking up a space. So you'll really have probably only about half that much. What I'm going to do is just take this bucket right here. It's already got holes in it down here at the bottom of it. I'd already done it one time and then I realized it was cut so it's no good. But it's as simple as this and you can do it with a square bucket, rectangle, five gallon bucket, doesn't matter. What you're going to do is take your one inch hole saw. Drill your hole about two inches up from the base. Inside that hole you're going to put a three quarter grommet. Uh, you can get these at Lowe's, Home Depot. That's where these came from. They're about a dollar and a quarter a piece. LDS Prepper posted a link on one of his recent videos about getting uh, grommets from Granger. G-R-A-I-N-G-E-R. -E uh, you do have to register. I've ordered from them a few times, electrical stuff. But I ordered some uh, last night. I ordered uh, 250 packs of these for 100 of them. And by the time they added the $9 shipping in, it came out to be like $26. So it'd be like 26 cents a piece for the grommets, as opposed to paying $1.26.27 at Lowe's, Home Depot, or wherever else. So if you need a whole bunch of them, uh, Granger would be the best place to go. But if you only need three or four, it wouldn't make sense paying the shipping. This grommet is just going to go right in the hole. Just make sure it's seated in there real good. You're going to slide a piece of PVC pipe in it. The next thing you'll need is a piece of half inch PVC, about three to four inches. Doesn't have to be perfect. And two half inch elbows. Put the elbow on one side. Go ahead and put it on there. And what you need to do is taper this down. You can do it with some sandpaper or what I do, I just rub it on a center block to try to taper it down a little bit so it'll slide in here a little bit easier. And the way you got to do this, make sure you got your hand on the back side so you don't push the grommet all the way in. And you're just going to work this in. goes in there pretty easy. And then put your other elbow on the inside. So now you got your bucket made. Got your elbows inside and out. Next thing is to uh, have a return line, which in this case right here is 2 inch PVC. And you're going to do the same thing, take the same hole saw and drill a one inch hole in here. And the only thing left is to take another small piece of PVC and it can vary depending on exactly where your return line is and how tall your buckets are and uh, that kind of deal. And just put another piece of PVC on there and that's going to sit right down in the hole. So all the water that comes out of this bucket goes into the return line and drops out to the end where your reservoir is going to be. This is a really simple process right here. We've talked about root systems plenty of times on tomatoes, how they grow, and this is different. When you're growing in a hydroponic setup, that's why you can get away with such a smaller bucket. You don't get the same kind of root growth. This is uh, one of the tomatoes that I had that came out. This is grown in the perlite, and you can see how fine the roots are. You don't get them great big uh, muscular type roots that are just going out somewhere as far as they can trying to get water. This was the roots off that Trinidad scorpion I had. Same situation. All these little fine mesh roots right here, you don't get them great big thick roots that uh, you see when you're growing in the ground. This is how they're able to grow two plants inside the same bucket in those Beto buckets. They actually have them sitting in corners like this right here. This right here is an example of having two in the same container, cut a hole in opposite corners, and these are actually cucumbers that I had growing in rock wool. Just stick the cube down in there, pour the perlite up around it, water it in, and it should be fine. So after you got your buckets made, you need to figure out what you're going to put in them. Now, I tried the, the big rocks. I did the little small rocks. I did the uh, hydroton. And I also did perlite. And what I found was there was no difference in the growth of the plant. It didn't matter what I put in those buckets. Uh, the growth was the same. So that being said, the next consideration is cost. Uh, these rocks are not cheap. Uh, the hydrogen is definitely not cheap. The cheapest way to go is the perlite. This is my last four buckets right here in my 21 setup, the new setup that I'm doing. And like I said, I wanted to use perlite because it was lightweight 
and it was cheaper and it would just be easier for me to work with but i couldn't just dump it in here because it would have come right back out clog everything up some people have put rags towels in there to use as a filter kind of deal i wanted something a little bit more simpler and pretty much pretty much foolproof kind of so what i did went on amazon started looking around i think I ended up actually getting it from somebody else but looking for uh, paint strainers and they actually make paint strainers for a five gallon bucket put your paint strainer down in here fill it up with perlite and put your lid on it and that's it this is the way i buy my perlite the great big 20 pound bags from the feed store so it cost me i think about 18 dollars 17.45 something like just say 18 bucks now it's a good idea to do this outside because it's so dusty keep from getting all that dust inside the greenhouse or your house or wherever you're working at go on and fill that bucket up try not to pour it on the ground then you're gonna just take your water hose and easy at first try to wet the top of it keep it from flying all out and then just start filling it with water till it starts to run out the bottom now it's starting to run out the bottom this is kind of settled in a little bit so I'm gonna add some more to it see how dusty it is this does take a little bit of time to get it set up but once you get it in place man is it worth it so easy to work with all right so we ought to have it nice and wet let the water finish draining out then we'll take it inside and start planting all right when it comes to planting in this there's just basically two things to remember number one you need roots number two you don't need any soil you don't want any soil in here all you want is the roots and whatever uh sterile situation you've got them growing in whether they be in uh the little grow plugs like that some of the grow down rock wool some of the sure grow cubes whatever you're doing or this one right here was just growing in plain water with a little bit of fertilizer in it what i'm gonna do stick this old uh, shovel handle down in here make me a little hole stick all them roots down in there pull the perlite around it and that's it all right after we got the plant in here uh, if you got a pretty good sized plant and it's got a long stem uh, you want to be able to go ahead and make you a kind of uh you know about an eight inch hole down there and set that thing down in there if you got a lot of leaves you need to be able to get the lid back on there so remember i had cut some of them in half they were two pieces so i could kind of come in from the side and lock around there what i decided to do what i've done is cut um i think a two and an eighth two and a quarter inch hole in here something like that and then put this on the miter saw and when i come down it'll cut all the way across here and i'll leave this connected so it'll kind of flex like this and that'll allow me to come back in here if I have a tall plant to open up and slide right around there and snap it on. Now I've got my lid on, the plants in there, we're ready to go. Right here, I'm going to do some of these uh, smaller suckers. And since they're small enough, what I can do, I can go ahead and put my lids on them. And they'll be a lot easier to work with. Now these are growing in the little uh, root starter plugs, grow plugs. Different companies make them. Uh, they work out real well. You just take, uh, what I do is take a screwdriver and punch a hole all the way through so I can get the stem of these suckers in there pretty good. Ones like this right here. Nice roots on there. That's, that's pretty, real easy to work with. You just take it, I take a six pack and just put one in each corner. That'll give me a little bit of space around there. These are nice plants right there. And the same situation, what I can do, I can just stick this down in here, open me up a hole a little bit, drop that down in, pull a little bit of perlite up to it, and then take the water hose and just hose in right down around that. Make sure that perlite settles right around the roots. And that's it, nice and neat. Hooking up my drip lines are real easy. This is just that regular half inch poly plastic pipe. And then you just come along, take your punch, just punch you a hole in that thing. And you got a little coupling fitting like this. 
This one happens to be round, some are oval, some are short, some are long, doesn't matter. You're going to stick that in the end of your tubing and then it's just going to snap right in that hole there. Now I got my line hooked up and I need to uh, get it up here and get it situated. A lot of times there'll be a little hole drilled where you can stick it in. But this is working out great because I got a little slot cut in the lid right here. And I just take it and it's just going to tuck right in there like that. And it's nice and snug, won't go anywhere. This is my final setup right here. I took this smaller uh, pump that had the four way on it. I'm going to use it over there on something else. And I put this one a little bit bigger. And I've got um, four inch air stones running into this tub. Plenty of aeration right now. I don't think you absolutely have to do this as far as the aeration goes, but I just feel like anything I can do to provide oxygen to those roots will be a plus. I don't think it will hurt anyway. And as far as the circulating pump, it's just this little uh, Echo 264 right here, about $21, $22, depending on where you get it at. Nothing fancy at all. And one note on using the perlite and the paint strainers. You can buy the little strainer if you want to to just put around your pump if you don't have a lot coming back to it. But uh, in this case, I knew there'd be quite a bit. So rather than having a bunch of perlite floating around in the reservoir, I'd rather put the strainers inside the bucket. And then even if that wasn't enough, I could still go back and add a strainer around the pump inside the reservoir. But you can look at that right there. And there's no perlite coming back into this reservoir. Those paint strainers, I think, are going to work out great. Coming out of the pump, I've got half inch poly plastic pipe. Get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. Elbows to make my turn so I don't get any kinks. Run all the way down the line. Coming off of that with quarter inch uh, drip lines. Each one just uh, slips right into the bucket. Bucket gets up to about right here with water fluid and it drains back out into this two inch line. Dumps into the reservoir and just uh, recirculating 30 minutes, three times a day and ought to make plenty of tomatoes. Really a simple process. Well guys, that's how simple it is. You got a reservoir of water, you got a bucket with some elbows in the bottom of it, set you a pump in there, pump your nutrients up to the bucket, let them return back through those two elbows in the bottom into return line and just cycle it back through. If the lights went out and you had no electricity, yes indeed, you could come along here and water these things manually and they keep right on growing. Being as how you're feeding a whole lot more plants, totally different than the lettuce. Uh, if you wanted to, you could let this thing run down just about the reservoir empty, then fill it back up with brand new nutrients all the time, or just say every two weeks, you know, clean it all out and refresh it. That way you wouldn't have to worry about trying to adjust it. If you have the capabilities and the stuff to do it, where you can uh, test it and know what to add back to the water, uh, that'll work too. This is a very versatile setup right here. A lot of people do this outside. Works fine if you got a nice level place to work with. Makes it even easier on your patio or something like that. Work out just fine. So I hope that was helpful. If you got any questions, uh, just ask. I'll try to answer them the best I can. I'm certainly no expert on this hydroponic stuff. I'm learning a little bit as I go. And as you can see, uh, it's working. So y'all take care. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time.